Pats finished the season on a massive high, rightly winning the FAI Cup. I thought they were excellent on the day. A couple of interesting points. Pico Lopez, as Stephen Bradley was saying to me in the interview there, is being rested. Um, we see Jack Byrne back again. And a start for Idamo Mako up front for St. Pats. Six of this team making their competitive debuts, as I was saying to Tim there in the interview. And I suppose in terms of blending new players, a match like this is important. Yeah, it's massive. It's the first competitive outing for them as well. The, the, the plus point for Tim would be that he knows a couple of them because he brought them in from Drottis, so he's not new to them. Or to defend Sean Hoare, of course, playing against his former side. And there is Hoare again getting his toe to the ball. A break here from Mark Doyle. Jones is in on the first face on the far side. Doyle goes on his own. He hits the target, but a comfortable save for Alan Manis. for taking the shot once he gets there because it's a really strong position for him and he's stronger on his right foot from Bournes I think Bournes is more disappointed he didn't receive the pass earlier Baruja plays it inside to Gary O'Neill now Redmond St. Pat's fans on the near side trying to get behind their team and Orr has Owen Doyle behind him and Doyle might rob this one Owen Doyle square ball lovely ball oh what a chance that was for Mark Doyle oh he's Glorious gone with the wrong foot hasn't he I was only about to praise Hall for dealing with the bounce of ball originally because the first one was the tougher one to deal with and then he checks back and then Doyle just picks his pocket he fires it across for his namesake and I think he's gone with the wrong foot con I think he should go with his left foot at least that way he's going to get contact on it it's going to go back towards the goal oh, he, he, yeah, he, he, he has to get with his he has to probably go with his left foot to make sure that he deals with back with Dylan Watts now Heavy touch from Mandroy and he's been dispossessed by Forrester. That's a lovely ball for Forrester. Owen Doyle territory. Owen Doyle forces the save for Manus. Ah, Manus done brilliant there. Really good. If you watch Alan just before Owen lifts his head, Alan goes like he's going to go and then retreats. The one time they picked, they picked the right pass, Con. It's a wonderful pass the outside the boot from Forrester. And Doyle's in. But Alan Manus is on his way out and then retreats and it causes Doyle to stutter a little bit. And it allows Manus to make the save. You see it great from this angle. It's a great, wonderful ball from Forrester that outside his right boot. And Manus goes and then stops and then says, right, beat me. All, all his experience there because he's on his way out and that sometimes can make the, the, the finish, make the mind up for the striker. He's going to dink or he's slotted down the side. Burns puts it into the six yard box. Oh, oh another great save for Manus on the double. What a great chance that was for St. Pat's to open the scoring. And Alan Manus again rooting the hero for Shamrock Rovers. Well, that was a wonderful opportunity Ooh, for see it now. St. Pat's. Dara Burns with the delivery. Great ball. And it was Scott coming in with the initial header. You see, he just comes from the edge of the box all the way around the back. I think that's what he's going to say. He says, like, they come in at nil all. I think they're lucky to go in at nil all in terms of the chances that Pats have. Here we go. Burn loving it forward. Chance oh. here. Oh, that's a good save. Really good stop from Anang. Serious save he's had to make. People pick up interest in him because he had a fantastic tournament. Yeah, the referee was right on the spot despite the uh, shouts from some of the St. Pat's fans looking for a penalty kick. A bank was header, only goes as far as Jack Byrne. Jack Byrne looking to get away from Lennon. Nice weight on that pass from Byrne to Mandroy, but a bank by Ray from his earlier error. error. Really good defending. He tries to, Dan, Danny tries to just deal with his first touch on the run. A banker read him and now Pats are on the counter-attack. Yeah, Lee Grace played Doyle on side. No cross into the area. And it's Grace with the block. The shot is on target. The save from the keeper, but there's Owen yeah, Doyle. Side. And he's got his first competitive goal for St. Pats. They've taken the lead here. Five minutes into the second half. Hannes made the save, but Owen Doyle from a couple of yards out, wasn't going to miss. It's Shamrock Rowers nil, St. Pat's won, 50 minutes on the clock. Ah, uh, it's a poacher's goal from Doyle. Mark Doyle does really well down the left-hand side, he drives at the fullback. Been
really quiet probably since he's missed chance fires one across goal I think it's Lennon actually takes the shot from the edge of the box and he kicks it into the ground and all Alan Manis can do is party it out and there's own Doyle like all good strikers do just follows it up you see him on the move finishes it with a plum and then goes over and celebrates in front of the St. Pat's fans and like every striker who scores from two yards out, he has a little look at the lines, man, yeah. to make sure that he was onside. Here we go again for St. Pat's. It's Doyle again into the area. The shot is deflected, and Manus makes the one-handed save. That little deflection almost caught Manus out. Box, he can let it run across his body or take a touch and open up and bend it with his right foot, but he just swings on it with his left. And there's the reaction from the goal. They enjoyed it, and they haven't stopped singing since it's gone in. In fairness to them, Con. Yeah, the uh, say pass. Pass from Jack Brown was carried by the wind, and it's going to carry. You know, I was going to say out of play, but Sean Hoare just managed to keep it in play. But then another loose pass inside. There was He's asked to keep him outside here. Another chance. Was there one or two shouts oh. for that ball there as the uh, ball was played towards the Rovers' goal? Yeah, it comes from Jack just being slack with his pass. He's, he plays one over the top of shot for his head and it just keeps running. And Hor can't get to it. And the Gannon retrieves it and does really well and then just coughs it up inside. It's a lot of them. And that's right. I think for, it's probably the best defensive play I've seen from Forrester since I've watched him play football, in fairness to him. He's been Almost really good. Good for here. He's got pace. Scott looking to get back. Ferruzia delivers a good ball in and there's an equaliser. The goalkeeper dropped it. And Shamrock Rovers are back on level terms. And it's Roland Finn, the captain, who's made it 1-1. An error from Anang, who couldn't hold on to Ferrugia's cross. And 67 minutes in, it's Shamrock Rovers 1, St. Pat's 1. Again, just from nothing, Ferrugia down the, the left-hand side just gets to the end line. He just fires across the ball across the box. The keeper, he should be holding it. It spills out, but you, if, you, if you see it from the other angle, Finn is the one that's making a beeline for the box. As soon as Neil took his touch down the line, Finn takes off and it's his eagerness to get in there and like you said it's a goal from nothing it's probably the first shot on target Rovers have had in the second half and it leads to a goal it would have, maybe from where their position was it looked like it was going to drop for a volley this is the goal and goalkeeper will be disappointed with yeah, that one. he hasn't had a lot to do in the second half in fairness to him and he should be dealing with that Always interesting at this point in the season to see new players coming into the league and to see what they look like and a couple of very impressive looking ones uh, for Pats tonight. Cotter has got through a couple of challenges there. Cotter still driving forward. Nice crossfield oh. ball as well. Just too much on it and Ferrugia unable to keep it in play but he applauds the intent from Cotter there. He's done well in the end to defend it. as far as Lee Grace last chance saloon for a winner in this game and it's gone out off Grace and that's going to be a goal kick and there is the full time whistle so it's finished 1-1 and it means that we are going to go to a penalty shootout to decide this one second half goals from Owen Doyle and Ronan Finn with the equaliser for Shamrock Rovers experienced striker experienced that's a great view you're right Tom Doyle looking to put Pats on their way here. Again, the wind is making life difficult for the players, just blowing the ball off the yeah, spot. Yeah, it's hard, and then you, you push it down into the ground, you're not, you're, you then get worried yeah. about the contact yeah. on it. Yeah. So, Owen Doyle finds the corner of the net. Lovely penalty. That's a nerve settler for St. Patrick's Athletic. Yeah. Just send, he sends Alan the wrong way. Really good penalty, considering he had to restart it. The confidence of him, the ref gives him the nod. Steps up and just wraps his foot round it. Bottom left-hand corner, doesn't it? So St. Pat's. Their nose is in front. Again, they're already stamping on the spot, which makes it a bit softer for the next one's coming up. Richie Tell for... Shamrock Rovers, Joseph Anang, bouncing around on the line. 
that's a good finish from Tao. In the same corner as Doyle put it in. One one. He raises his finger to his lips towards the St. Pat's fans who were giving him a bit of stick in that second half and just as yeah. he went up to take the kick. Yeah, it's a stuttery little run that he does, and then he just he's looking at the keeper a little bit, just waits for him to go. He wraps his foot round again into the same corner that Doyle puts it. Two this really good Mark penalties. Doyle now. So the other Doyle for St. Patrick's Athletic. And Alan Manas got down the right way, but it just slipped in under his body. And St. Pat's lead 2-1. I thought Manas was going to save yeah, that. Yeah, that was one of those bad penalties that goes in, Con, we were talking about. He doesn't hit it well at all. It's probably one. I think Alan be disappointed he hasn't saved that. He's gone. He's actually gone past a little bit. He's read it that early and it's just gone under his body. So Pat's two one up. Uh, it's two two. Lovely, gentle finish into the net. Yeah, he just waits for him to go, doesn't he? You Graham can see him. Yeah. He's so confident with his penalty kicks, Graham. Two, he's, two. Look, he's looking at the keeper on his run up here and he's just waiting and waiting and waiting. You see, he's stood, and then he just has a little look at the last minute and wraps his foot around it and delays it. Forrester missed in the cup final, didn't he? As far as he did. And, and he's, he's missed, missed again. again. Alamanis makes the save. Chris Forrester holds his head hands momentarily and makes his way back to the well, such a good line. striker of the ball it's amazing isn't it because he it's a good height for Alan and when you guess the right it's yeah it's not very it's not in the corner it's a good height for Alan and it doesn't go on the eating this time Sean Hort straight down the middle and Sean McGrover's lead by three goals to two Remember Sean Hoare scoring for Dundalk in a European penalty shootout in uh, Riga, I think it was. I think, past. I think they realise the keeper's going, guessing which, just taking a guess on which side, and he seems to have gone to the left on every penalty. Pressure on this one now yeah. for Tunde Oulabi. That's a good finish. Very good penalty. Gary O'Neill, who scored the uh, winning penalty kick when Shamrock Rovers won the Cup of the Aviva Stadium a couple of years ago. And that's another very calm penalty. So this is a must-score penalty for St. Pat's now, after that conversion from Gary O'Neill. And it's Adam O'Reilly stepping forward, the 20-year-old on loan from Preston. Again, Gary just with a little... Throws a little shuffle in and the keeper goes early and he just slots it to the other side. So Adam O'Reilly has to score this. Yeah. Real pressure on him. Nah, it's a very good penalty. Really good finish from Adam O'Reilly. And Jack to win it. Jack Byrne. Scores this one. Shamrock Rovers have won the President's Cup. Goalkeeper taking his time to take his place on the line. Joseph Anang. That's a good finish from Jack Byrne. Shamrock Rovers have won this one 5 4 in a penalty shootout. For the first time in the club's history, they've won the President's Cup. After a keenly contested game, a very good penalty shootout from Shamrock Rovers, scoring all five goals. Yeah, like I said, you had a bit, bit more composure in the penalty shootout, and it comes down to the goalkeepers at the end of the day. Again, Alan makes one save, the keeper makes a mistake for in, the, in the goal, and for the goal for St. Pat's, and, and then ultimately Shamrock Rovers win the President's Cup. With his goal, the goal that brought Rovers back into the match. And he will collect this trophy, the President's Cup, from Michael D. Higgins. For the first time in Shamrock Rovers' history, they have won the President's Cup. Big smile on the face of the captain, Rona Finn. The fans are happy in the South Stand and the far side. Disappointment for uh, St. Pat's, but it's silverware for Shamrock Rovers already. And 
as I say, first time that the club have ever won this trophy, so it's another one to go yeah. into the illustrious and history you, of the club. You can only win it if you're successful the year before. <laughs>